do you think people are saying, look, I'm so turned off by everything that the mainstream media have got to offer that I'm going to flock to Maya Tusi's YouTube channel? What do you think explains the movement almost? Well, um, at least when it comes to my channel, everything I have is thanks to Theresa May <laughs> because she failed the Brexit negotiations. My channel was created because I was frustrated that uh, during the 2017, 2018 days, uh, she and her government were failing Brexit, but also the mainstream media were not really giving us the proper updates. And there was so much happening every single day. So I became nerdy and I was like going to like, all these European websites, finding the latest kind of uh, negotiating stands and everything else. Um, and my channel became the go-to source for a lot of people who wanted to see what's going on with the Brexit updates. Um, so that was kind of technically that the blame went on both the political establishment, but also the media. But obviously the, the channel evolved. It wasn't no longer about Brexit, but that kind of then applied to everything else. Um, a lot of people at the time thought that both in America and here, the right-wing YouTubism and everything else was, oh, well, all the young people, all the, you know, the, this is what they want, the meme generation. Actually, in fact, it was <laughs> mostly older people. So even right now, the biggest demographics I have is like over 55 and 60. And the, you know, the, the boomers and everybody else, who thought, he, people think, oh, they're, they're technophobes. Actually, in reality, they, they are so obsessed with it. They, you know, I, I'm too far, I have no idea how an 85-year-old find YouTube, but it's impressive. <laughs> and so that, that is, it, it, the fact that the bigger demographic is still the grown-ups, essentially. So it's not a new platform because of you guys, that you were created, and oh, you were born, and you grew up with the whole YouTube stuff. No, it's actually still normal people out there who, who had fax machines and you know, other stuff. Oh, I forgot to get this. Oh, they're, they're VHS players. Um, but I think it's because the media still hasn't learned. And I think that at least the attempt of uh, GB News has been better to an extent because uh, on the one hand, obviously, um, a lot of shows are good, but then it all still ends up, because it's TV, it's 24-7 essentially, it ends up being flat and it's just it's natural. Um, so it, it, it happens to be a situation where um, some shows, and it applies to many other channels too, Talk TV, GB News, and even like the new version of Channel 4, which is still the same thing, it ends up being basically an expensive YouTube channel. Because um, the shows that are more like a, a pod, video podcast and it's someone just talking to a camera. And I'm like, okay. That's kind of good, but that's why GB News did it slightly better because you're actually, actually given a new angle rather than just talking to a camera for no reason. Um, people are sick and tired of that format, the old format. Um, they kind of want interactive human side to actually come back. Um, they, they don't just watch it because of the Netflix era of, oh, I want to watch what I want when I want how I want. It's also because when I do a random live stream drunk outside Red Lion Pub in Westminster, I can reply to the live chat comments. Um, and they feel like they're involved and they're engaged. And the whole point is engagement. Because they've lost the engagement from the political class and the media. And they come to weirdos like me. So.